happening again when international travel happens again. But, you know, we, we have lived with that our entire lives. So shark movies should affect Australians more than most because, it's, you know, we, we, we have sort of not that intimate experience with it, but we know that they're out there and, and, and they're actually a reality. So it, it's odd that there's probably only real one Australian film that's decided to go there, that we, you know, that maybe we don't want to freak people out too much and stop people coming here. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's, there's uh, any English shark films. That I know no. about just because it's <laughs> it's so unheard of. Like you know, you'll occasionally yes. hear if there's a, a shark a mile off coast, it'll be news across the country. Yeah, uh, it's spotted yeah. a shark. Uh, yeah, which good. I'm glad about that. To be honest, <laughs> um, I've n- never been scared to go in the sea like a lot of people are post jaws. Uh, but no, I'm, I'm grateful that there's not many shark attacks here. Do you reckon there were people who saw Jaws three and were then scared to go to Sea World? because of it. I, you'd have to think there was i mean like as as silly as it was especially children if it, if it you know like when i watched the first jaws i was far too young and shouldn't have watched it i'm sure there'd be some children that watched jaws 3 and and you know the parents then ever, ever suggested going to a sea park it was the worst thing that they could ever <laughs> imagine based on that i mean i i do tend to think of the film when i see those sort of pyramid skiers like that instantly comes to mind is jaws 3 but not in a like, oh god, I never want to go there because that might actually happen. Because I think the first film has that realism to it, whereas this one, it's it's all so silly that this could never, it, you know, theoretically a shark could never actually enter a water park. Like there's just there'd have to be too many safeguards in place for it to ever happen. Yes, I would hope so. Uh, so another sequence in this that I feel like could be. An element that could be cut out is the little yellow, the Thunderbird 4, the submersible they take. Yes. yes. Which is a submersible that, that fills with water. So it just kind yes. of feels like it, it's a car underwater. It's not, you can't really <laughs> live in it, but it's just going to get you there. No. So uh, uh, Mike and Kate take it down because they're looking for the, the guy who who closed the gate has disappeared. And his, his girlfriend or wife or whatever is like furious. She throws his, his stuff at Mike. He never came home last night. <laughs> Uh, which hey after that scene we never see her again <laughs> no we need to find out that guy died never yeah. see her reaction to him dying <laughs> no no um but i i that felt to me like the the mrs kintner scene from jaws or like my when with her son dies it's, she's yes. showing like a a real world uh relative like of of a victim it's not just all fun and games oh look so the shark's eating someone wasn't that fun and it's like this person had a family uh, and then they're annoyed at him for not coming home. So they take down the sub and they, they're exploring the Spanish galleon wreckage. There's a skeleton under the water whose hand is clearly supposed to be three-dimensional, wafting mm-hmm. in your face. <laughs> <laughs> some, of, some of the choices as to what's going to be 3D are kind of are odd. Right, like this, yeah. This static model skeleton that's just a part of the attraction. Yeah, waft it in your face. Go for it. Uh, so... <laughs> So they, yeah, they they go down to the the wreckage, and then that's when they they find out there's a shark. The shark attacks, and the dolphins get them out. And this this could be a real great action sequence. I feel like yeah, in better yeah. hands, this could be incredible. Yeah. But for just some reason, it just it just feels a bit stale. It just kind of stalls, and I can't I can't explain why. I th- I guess that's where having a production designer as a director is a, is a a bad idea is it's not someone who I guess innately understands how to construct an action sequence in the same way as someone like a Spielberg does. I mean, that's the problem with this franchise. Your first film is directed by someone who goes on to be one of the greatest directors. A of all legend time. of cinema. <laughs> yes. So you've really set yourself up to just always pale in comparison to that director. Yeah, so right. I'm I never mean, going to watch that's... the Psycho sequels just because there's the, no, yeah, it's not going to exactly, it's not going to work. Very similar because you know, you started out at the top of a mountain and it's all downhill from here. Um, but to to not even try to get someone who has some action experience or some horror experience, <laughs> some directing experience, directing experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean that that's what makes me think that Universal didn't necessarily believe in this like it was almost ticking a box to stick something in cinemas in 1983 and giving the the 3d thing a go it was like they didn't really believe that this was going to be 
some sort of groundbreaking masterpiece. It was just a silly piece of fluff to shove in cinemas over the summer of 1983. And to be fair, I mean, it it cost 18 million, but it made 88. Correct. So, yeah. Which it works. Which is a lot. That's, yeah, that's it still works. For 83, that's that's. That's decent. That's, that's good. That's the thing it, when, when everybody sort of makes fun of films that, that that are purposely bad, that are made cheaply or whatever, they don't have to do a lot to make a hell of a lot of money that way. You know, like it is a very clever way. It's kind of like the Saw movies, how we, if there was that period where we had a new one every year and they weren't particularly good and they mostly did the same thing over and over again, but they were cheap to make because they didn't star anybody of relevance. The The... the entire budget was so small that even if it made 50 million dollars that's a huge amount of money so that that that's basically what universal did here is we make something relatively cheaply and we still make 88 million dollars well that's that's a huge profit that they can do use for other things far more artistically important yeah it made like 45 and a half in the u.s i think mm. this is called box of mm. mojo and just in 83 like Risky Business was the 10th highest grossing. That made 63. So there's yeah. like less than 20 million between those two. So this, I haven't got the yeah. full ranking of the year, but this would have been up there. So yeah, this, this is, this was a successful film. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, you know, everyone hates the Transformers films. They made a lot of money. Yeah. So, <laughs> I stopped Except business, the business element of show business that you have to understand. It's like, it's not always about making the greatest thing it's just about making something that makes some money yeah everyone's doing this or well, most people are yeah. making this for the money uh, it's, yeah it's the opposite of podcasting <laughs> yeah and being a film critic trust if me. anyone would like to sponsor us we're happy to <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so the uh, later in the show I'll, I'll kind of reel off a list of how jaws 3 is similar to deep blue sea but i feel like the, the sequence that's most similar is the bit in the tunnel and the, yeah. the control room, because that's all fully underwater, people mm. trapped in there. And I got a real Deep Blue Sea vibe from that, and I, I always yeah. appreciate yeah. that. So, good. <laughs> uh, so the only... I think one of the main sequence we haven't talked about is is the uh, the Australian guy, Philip Fitzroyce, uh, who uses himself and his cameraman as, as live bait to catch the sharks, and this doesn't go well, and he ends up being eaten whole by, <laughs> by the mother shark. <laughs> Um, which is is fun uh, <laughs> yeah yeah because everyone else gets like torn apart you get an arm thrown out or whatever he just gets devoured devoured uh, holding a grenade yeah. which comes in handy <laughs> later on yes um, he saves the day in a in a sense i guess yeah but he uh, posthumously saves the day by dying with an outstretched arm with a grenade in it that <laughs> uh, Mike can get a bent bit of metal and pull the pin and blow the shark up. It's ridiculous. I just, I, it's phenomenal. It's incredible how that happens. Uh, there is no way. There is no way. Just, no. just from a reality perspective, not going to work. Uh, <laughs> from from a movie, I loved it. <laughs> it's it's incredible. <laughs> and we, we've had a guest on in the past, Kevin Kevin Culp who's um, watched a lot of, of shark movies over lockdown. His kind of mission over lockdown was to watch as many shark movies as possible. He's got a list on Reddit. And when he, when he was last on, he had a theory that uh, underwater welding uh, means a, a shark film is, is not good. And right. this right. complies with that because... Yes, absolutely. We have some underwater welding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I just had to bring that theory back up again. And Kevin, we've reaffirmed it. You're correct. Yeah, yeah. Because there's, there's some underwater welding in... Deep Sea 2 has some welding. It's technically underwater because it's, it's in the facility, uh, but they're not submerged. It's, it's on dry land underwater, <laughs> which I'm still going to count as, as being underwater welding. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> I think that we've pretty much got to the, to the end of the plot. Um, yeah. There's giant show... There's, all the tourists are out watching all, the, all of the shows... Um, when they find out that they they only had a the baby shark, they only caught the baby shark. There's a, a adult shark there, which then makes Dennis Quaid just race across the entire park. He <laughs> commandeers a popcorn truck, uh, he flips it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's full like Die Hard three driving through Central yeah. Park, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, which is a lot of fun. And then 
as I've mentioned, there's a whole pyramid of water skiers. There's so many shows out on patrol on on display and everything. Shark gets no one. Shark causes havoc. Everyone's falling in the mm-hmm. water left and right. Mm-hmm. They all just about mm-hmm. make it to safety. I'm like, what? A, mm-hmm. What is going on? <laughs> what film are we watching here? But then it heads to the the bumper boats where Sean and and Kelly are. She's on a break somehow. She was performing and it's due to perform again soon. And she's like, let's go to the bumper boats. And so <laughs> they, they, they go. He doesn't want to, but they go. And uh, there's a guy who is just being relentlessly mean to them, keeps on bumping into them, bumps in, they fall in the water. Shark comes, bites Kelly. Uh, she survives. It's fine. Um, <laughs> for we assume she's taken away in an ambulance. Sean goes with her. Never see them again. Mm-mm. And then Mike and Kate and Calvin... And some of Calvin's team, including his nephew, who just yells out at one point, "Nephew!" It just yeah, yells at one point. Uh, I wanted so much more from his character. He could have been, he's just such a, an entertaining guy. I mean, he just gets so yeah, much to do. Yeah. Uh, they head underwater. They head down to the control room. The shark bursts into the control room. Great, nice slow motion, it's just horrendous effect shot of the shark coming towards the the, the glass, <laughs> stopping. Beat, beat, beat. It's, it's iconic. It's that, 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 that's the scene that I think just encapsulates this film so perfectly. <laughs> you got a... Inanimate shark slowly moving towards the screen. I, 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 I don't know how that ever looked good in, in yeah. 3D in 1983, but it looks even worse now. Oh, it, it's just the moment that it stops. And yes. we take a break. <laughs> and then the glass shatters. <laughs> and we've, we've, we've cut to... Uh... To the people inside the control room, <laughs> slow motion going like no, yeah, yeah. And the shark coming towards them. <laughs> uh, so the shark like take takes out. I think it takes out the nephew actually because he's he's not alive at the end. Mm. Um, so he eats somebody. Everyone else gets out. We're told we never see Calvin and the other person in the the lady in in the control room. We never see them get out. But when once Mike and Kate get to the surface. Uh, Kate's like, well, the others! And Mike's like, Calvin got out! And we, yeah. <laughs> we don't see that. We've never seen him again. We're just told that he's out. So, good. Uh, but yeah, Mike and Kate stay underwater. Uh, they, they hook the grenade pin out. Shark blows up. <laughs> get to the surface. Dolphins are alive. Roll credits. Which, that's something I really I do enjoy about these films is shark dies, film ends. Yeah, there's, there's yeah. No, that's no. The, that's the trademark. It's it's literally over. We're not wrapping things up. There's a nice <laughs> actually this, this film ends on a freeze frame, so you can tell it's the eighties. Yes, and it's a freeze yes. frame with the two dolphins jumping up and spinning, but it's actually just mm-hmm. one dolphin, and then they've mirrored it to the other side of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Oh, it's beautiful. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm so I'm so glad I've seen this. Yes, it ha- and that's the thing. Like it, it has to still be seen. Like I could say that you you literally don't need to see four, and you're fine. I feel like this is one of those movies that people absolutely have to see, especially if you've seen the first one. Like I just, you could potentially skip the second and just see the third. I would be completely happy with that. Well, I'm gonna watch the fourth one. It's gonna happen. Yeah. I'm already... I'm, I'm committed at this point. I feel like <laughs> I'd, I'd hate to deprive the listeners of my reaction to Jaws: The Revenge. Yes, yes. Actually, I've got, I've got the, I've got the, the box set of two, three, and four, and I just want to read the blurb for Jaws three <laughs> on the back of the boxes. The most famous shark of all time is back, bigger and more terrifying than ever. Florida's new undersea kingdom is a maze of underwater glass tunnels, which is terrorized by a giant female great white shark. Hell bent on bloodthirsty revenge. That's not this film. That's no, not, that's not the film I watched. Because like, it's, firstly, no, this isn't the same shark. It's not the most famous no, shark. It's back. It's no. a different shark. That implies that it's literally the same shark. <laughs> Which, if it is, it's died twice already. Yes. Uh, so. <laughs> yes. Yes. And yeah, Und- Florida's new undersea kingdom is capitalized like that's the name of the place, not the name of the place. And uh, maze of underwater glass tunnels. Yep, fine. Hell bent on bloodthirsty revenge. So that to me implies when the young shark dies because of human incompetence, does the mother shark know? Yeah. How? Yeah. That yeah. Is psychic. That's implying that this is actually purposeful for the purposes of revenge. <laughs> and we were told in Jaws 2 
as a zoologist lady who says sharks don't hold a grudge. No. They don't take 